A race has been on the horizon. While it does involve cars, it isn't about a race for speed. It's a race for EV dominance across Southeast Asia. The price? Billions of dollars in revenue and the prestige of becoming Tesla's manufacturing powerhouse in the region. The main contenders? Malaysia and Indonesia. Each brings unique strength to the table, all scrambling for the attention of the EV titan, Tesla. This is a story of history, strategy, and innovation. It's a story of Malaysia versus Indonesia, the race for Tesla. Now, let's start with some history on Indonesia's automotive industry. Back in the 1950s, Indonesia's automotive landscape was dominated by European cars, brands like Morris and Austin. As the local demand for cars grew, assembly plants were set up in Indonesia. But the majority of components were imported. This all changed in the 60s, when the automotive industry in Indonesia shifted east towards Japan. The catalyst? A little underground car brand you may have heard of, Toyota. In a daring move, Toyota convinced the Indonesian government to replace the entire fleet of government cooperative vehicles with the Toyota Land Cruiser Canvas Stock. The Land Rover, which was their usual favourite, was left in the dust. How did Toyota pull it off? Well, if you were presented with a car that was just as good as the premium option, only more affordable, which would you pick? Just ask Peter, he bought a new car last week. Now, here begs the question, if Japanese can deliver the same quality of cars to Indonesia at a fraction of the price, why choose European brands? And if imported Japanese cars can be so much cheaper, how much more money can be saved if most of the components were made domestically in Indonesia? This question leads us to the 70s. A new chapter in Indonesia's automotive story. The government, recognizing the potential of the industry, enacted laws to encourage domestic car production. This move, initially seen as unwelcoming by European manufacturers, was embraced by Japanese car companies. They saw an opportunity and seized it, partnering the local businesses to expand their operations. One such example is PT Daihatsu, a joint venture that would go on to become a major player in the Indonesian market. There are approximately 1,800 separate parts in a car, and if you include the nuts and bolts, an average car has about 30,000 pieces. And in order to make a good car and become a significant player internationally, one must have a well-established supply chain network in the automotive industry. Well, over the span of 40 to 50 years, it is safe to say that Indonesia has mastered it. Today, Indonesia is often known as the backyard of Japanese car makers. Based on data from 2017, just five Japanese car brands have accounted for 90% of total car sales in Indonesia. Now, consider this. Indonesia ranks as the fifth largest passenger vehicles producer in Asia. When you realize that 90% of this production is attributed to Japanese vehicles, the nickname becomes strikingly fitting. Over the years, technology has evolved and so have cars. Self-driving vehicles, once the quirky subjects of science fiction, are now a reality with Tesla leading the change. Tesla's secret an ecosystem built around the EV industry. They have invested heavily in their supercharging networks, boosting over 20,000 superchargers worldwide. This network not only offers convenience to users, but also cements their loyalty to Tesla, laying a solid foundation for the company's long-term growth. But Tesla's ecosystem is so much more intricate than what it seems like on the surface. One to truly understand the whole value chain to know exactly what company form the network of this ecosystem? Check out this feature on the Moomoo app. It reveals the 125 companies involved in Tesla's value chain, from battery packs to thermal management, smart cockpits to charging systems. The Momo app has a gold mine of features designed to help you identify winning stocks, track companies' earnings in line with the market's earnings season, stay updated with the US economic pulse, and much more. In fact, there's just too many features for me to say here. So why don't you check out the link below to download the app? It's time to explore Momo for yourself. 
So you see, it's exciting times ahead for the automotive industry. Currently, Tesla needs to build 7 or 8 more gigafactories to meet mask targets of selling 20 million EVs by 2030. And that's where Southeast Asia comes into play. As one of the largest passenger car producers in Asia, Indonesia doesn't want to lose out. In fact, Indonesia is ready to make its pitch. Known for having the world's largest nickel reserve, a key component in EV batteries, Indonesia was a strong contender. Not only does the country have ambitious plans to become the world's largest producer of lithium batteries, they also envision a future in which roads are dominated by electric motorcycles and cars. Imagine this, by 2025, they aim to have 2.1 million electric motorcycles and 400,000 electric cars on the road, with 20% of them being manufactured locally, thus becoming the EV manufacturing hub of Southeast Asia in line with critical climate goals. This ambition has attracted companies to start building EV assembly facilities in Indonesia. Tesla was no different. Hey guys, do you know we just launched our newsletter? If you would like to have some exclusive weekly financial tips, some of our thoughts behind the scene, and my thoughts about the market, you can go to www.mrmoneytv.com to sign up for the newsletter. When you subscribe for the newsletter, you will get a retirement calculator. So what are you waiting for? Sign up now! In the beginning of 2023, Indonesian President Jokowi said that the government is in talks with Tesla to invite the company to build a production facility with a capacity of 1 million units of Tesla cars in the country. To sweeten the deal, Indonesia also offered another incentive ranging from tax breaks to a concession to mine nickel, the crucial ore required for lithium batteries we mentioned earlier. And then, something happened. On the 1st of March 2023, Tunku Zafro, Malaysia's Minister for International Trade and Industry, announced via social media that Tesla is setting up shop in Malaysia. According to his post, Tesla will establish its head office in Malaysia, along with Tesla Experience and Service Centers, and a supercharger network across the country. Wait, wait, what? How did that happen? And why Malaysia? In 2020, an analysis was conducted to develop a new national automotive policy. The study revealed that Malaysia has a competitive edge in the services and electrical and electronics industries related to the EV industry. This is largely thanks to the presence of numerous semiconductor companies in Penang, a global tech hub, making Malaysia the seventh largest producer in the semiconductor sector. Given that high-tech chips are integral to EVs, it makes strategic sense for Tesla to establish its HQ in Malaysia that forms a significant part of its supply chain. Without all these high-tech chips in an EV, the car simply cannot move. So, if a big part of Tesla's supply chain will come from Malaysia, why not set up the HQ here? Furthermore, since the production of the first local car, Proton, in 1983. The automotive industry in Malaysia has grown to become a key pillar of the Malaysian economy. Currently, there are more than 20 manufacturing and assembly plants in Malaysia, making it the third largest car maker in Southeast Asia. These existing infrastructure and capabilities provide a conducive environment for EV manufacturers like Tesla. And since the PH government's victory in GE15, Malaysia officials have been actively courting investors from China, Japan, South Korea, and other countries to encourage foreign direct investments in Malaysia's EV industry. These efforts are beginning to yield results. For instance, Samsung SDI has committed to building a $1.3 billion battery manufacturing plant in Seremban. Additionally, Linus, which is a mining company from Australia, have their license extended for three years from March 2023 to 2026. If you see the bigger picture, you will notice these investments are setting the stage for Tesla, the EV industry leader, to expand its business in the region from Malaysia. Indonesia has been intensively lobbying for Tesla to invest there. They even incentivized Tesla with a nickel mining concession. But that offer doesn't seem convincing enough to fulfill the supply chain for battery raw materials at Tesla. For a company as big as Tesla, 
they have a social responsibility to ensure environmental sustainability and good governance. However, some reports are saying that nickel companies in Indonesia are still far away from being sustainable. From deforestation, water pollution, to illegally run mines, ESG regulations in place have not been implemented properly in the field. As a result, many companies are non-compliant with regulations. Perhaps this is one of the reasons for Tesla cancelling its investment there. It seems that Indonesia has not given up pursuing Tesla to build a production facility in the country. Its coordinating minister of maritime and investment affairs, Luhut bin Sa Panjaitan, is slated to visit Elon Musk in California on the 3rd of August to iron out the details and try to convince Tesla to continue investment in Indonesia. Is there a chance for Indonesia to do that? In my opinion, yes. In fact, I think it's pretty much guaranteed. Now, here's something you should know. From a foreign investor's perspective, they often see Southeast Asia as one single market, regardless of national borders. And this isn't just an opinion from me. In fact, the Deputy Minister of Miti, Liu Chintong, mentioned it in our interview. So, it doesn't matter which country they invest into, as long as their businesses have a footprint in this region to expand further into other countries. At this point, Malaysia's advantage in high-tech fields, especially within the automotive and semiconductor industries, makes it an attractive destination for cutting-edge companies like Tesla. Coupled with the Malaysian government's proactive stance towards foreign investments, the country has effectively positioned itself as an ideal location for potential manufacturing ventures in the future. Tesla's initial foray into Malaysia, primarily focusing on distribution and infrastructure development, could very well be the precursor to larger, more significant commitments. Conversely, Indonesia, with its vast reserves of nickel, which is a crucial resource for EV batteries, offers a compelling case for Tesla's manufacturing needs. Indonesia's capability to provide the raw material necessary for Tesla production line could be a strategic advantage that enhances the overall feasibility and efficiency of Tesla's regional operations. The point here is to recognize that this isn't about competition, but collaboration. Each country has unique strength and geographical unfair advantages, which should not be seen as fear, but rather as synergistic factors that can propel the whole ASEAN region going forward. This model of collaboration can be seen with Dyson's case. The British company has effectively leveraged on the strength of different countries within the ASEAN region in the past. Singapore, known for its robust IP laws, skilled workforce, and cutting-edge tech scene, became the ideal location for Dyson's R&D hub. It is here that Dyson engineers and designers conceive and develop new products, pushing the boundaries of innovation. On the other hand, Malaysia, with its extensive manufacturing capabilities, lower production costs, and a vast pool of technical labour, became the location for Dyson's production facilities. The majority of Dyson's products are manufactured in Malaysia, enabling the company to capitalize on the country's strong industrial infrastructure while keeping costs down. In essence, this collaboration between Singapore and Malaysia within the Dyson framework allowed each country to play to its respective strengths. Singapore, with its high-tech capabilities, handled the conceptualization and development phase. In contrast, Malaysia, with its solid manufacturing facilities, oversaw the production and assembly phase. Such an arrangement led to significant economic gains for both countries. It created jobs, spurred investment, and fostered technology transfer, leading to an overall enhancement in their respective economies. It also helped Dyson become a globally recognized brand, demonstrating the immense potential of regional cooperation. This model of partnership can be mirrored in the Malaysia-Indonesia context with Tesla, reinforcing that the focus should be on symbiotic growth rather than competition. With Tesla's venture, we are looking at a similar dynamic, but at a much greater scale. 
by playing to their strengths, Malaysia and Indonesia can collectively spark a significant shift in the automotive industry, positioning ASEAN as a formidable player in the global electric vehicle landscape. Cooperation rather than competition is the key to unlocking shared prosperity in the future of our region. Thank you very much.